1927, a government hospital came to our community. And I remember the old people talking about that hospital and, and what, that ho what that facility would, would do to our people. And the way they said it is that, that that place has come to change our minds. It's come to change our minds. And so <clears throat> the women, the women started to go there to give birth. Before that, in 1927, all of our women gave birth at home, home births, with a, with a midwife or a grandmother. Um, and, and when those women started to go to that facility, they started to uh, bottle feed their babies. And we all know that the breast, the breast milk is the medicine. And so they would keep them there for 10 days our women there for 10 days and and they would be so weak they would be so weak and and in that facility we would we would not we would not the family wouldn't be involved anymore where before the family was always involved with the birth of a child and they wouldn't be singing those songs those birthing songs to that child in the language that the child could understand and so they were absolutely right. That's exactly what happened. That facility changed our mindset. A lot of Native people won't go to see a traditional healer. And I think the reason for that might be that they may have suffered some kind of spiritual abuse. Their experience with somebody in the past might be uh, deterring them. Another reason might be when it comes to religion and maybe growing up in residential school, I think people became scared, told that their culture might be bad. And I think those kind of things are pretty deep. Like people are uh, kind of scared to, to do that because of some people are in dialysis, you know, some people are uh, on the pill, some people are taking needles. So, you know, they've been doing it for so long that they, they kind of don't want to go to the traditional part. We've almost given ourselves over to other people. You know, we've said to the doctor, you look after my physical health. You know, we've said to the psychologist, you look after my emotional health. We've said to the psychiatrist, you look after my mental health. And we've said to the clergy, you look after my spiritual health. We are not separated. We are whole people. And I think that, that one of the keys or one of the secrets is, as, a, as an individual, is to realize that all of the healing becomes with, from within. When we're going back to our culture, then, then what's happening is we're using the spirit of the, the plants and that to help heal us. And that's a big part, and people f forget about that. They just tend to look at the, the physical part of the, the plant, you know. But there's a, also a spirit within that plant, and those spirits can also help us with our, with our sicknesses. And so it goes hand in hand with, our, you know, with the reawakening of our culture. 80%, fully 80% of the world's population rely primarily on herbs as their main source of medicines. Most of us end up being buried underneath the plant that could have kept us around for a longer period of time. People say, oh, med native medicines is na bad. No, native medicine is not bad. Native medicines is here to protect you. You don't think so, that's why that was not here, put here before us for us to use. There's a cure for everything, but you gotta. It's all out for us. According to my uncle, the Great Spirit put everything here, and yeah. He says it's just up to us to use it. You never know what's going to happen in the future if you don't watch what you're doing. I know it's nice to have French fries, but uh, in the long run, they'll be sorry like me. 
my message would be, you know, you could offer all the tobacco in the world, but, um, you know, the tobacco will do its part, what it's supposed to do, but if there's part that you have to play, you know, and taking care of yourself, then you have to do that, you know. There's no way around it. People are always looking for this magic pill to make their illness go away. They're looking for the doctor to tell them what to do all the time, and this is going to make the situation go away. I know people who still have amputations on insulin. I know people that are taking all the medications, and they're still running into kidney problems. So we had to do something else. We have to try a different approach. And I think traditional medicine has something to offer. I think naturopathic medicine, herbal medicine, all these modalities, they have something to offer. If I could put any message out there in terms of kids, especially in First Nations communities, I'd say you are so lucky. You are so lucky to really be so close to the teachings steep yourself in some of the more traditional ways that there are some very, you know, some tremendously valuable information there. And uh, that would certainly help to uh, prevent the ramifications from a disease, which, remember, is the main disease of civilization. So, of course, get less civilized. Less <laughs> Get wild. <laughs> Kids really have to look at what things are going to be, you know. You might as well take the word of caution now before down there's a problem 20, 30 years from now. I've been a rebel myself, too. I find people phoning me saying, Mom, can I eat this? Can I eat that? <laughs> Just ask me stuff so what I used to ask her, you know. It's, it's good to pass on like things that, that will help people. My wish for the community is to have, to be diabetes free. That's what I see as our vision. So we're all creators by our, by our decisions that we make each day. And, uh, and if we want to, uh, to get away from uh, cure, not cure, but uh, get rid of diabetes in our communities, then we have to use those eyes and ears and our brain to, uh, to look after our souls and our bodies. And the, uh, the young people uh, can really uh, can do that. This is my life. This is Nibish's life. This is, you know, it's it's other people's lives too. When you're carrying a child, you know, it's it's not only you that you have to think about. I think there has to be um, a little bit more active medical involvement, whether it's medical health involvement, whether it's from the medical profession or whether it's from traditional healers and counselors, where we see the instances of diabetes already. Let's be reasonable. My grandmother had it, my mother had it, I have it. It doesn't take a genius in the community to begin to see the pattern for my nieces and nephews. We need to look at those things and we need to, to be more direct than perhaps we often are with each other. We're not very direct, yet something will be right in front of us. And we don't go over and we don't say to the six-year-old that we see tying in to the fruit juice and the cakes at the Friendship Center feast first instead of uh, after the other stuff. We don't say, you know, in a really wonderful and supporting and loving anti way, I care about you. I care about you so much that I'm willing to be direct about this. You've had enough cake. Have some water instead of some juice. I'm going to come over and talk to you and talk to your mom. I'm going to ask your grandma to be there because she's lived through some of this and she knows what you're facing. And maybe there are ways and processes that we haven't used. And we have that creativity, us as a people. We're amazingly creative. So why don't we put our minds to how would we change that situation? The fast generation type thing out there, everyday life today, is kind of past for them. Now they have to remember themselves to, to try to put a little screech on it and to understand the system, how diabetes can affect them in real life. Because this is real life now, we're talking about today. A lot of people don't see tomorrow. And I'm telling you that as I'm sitting here. Today is the day that counts. No, I don't think it's too late. I don't think that it's too late to reverse 
that whole problem of, of diabetes or of cancer or whatever. But we need to start looking at that way of life, that good way of life that we once had because we didn't have the sicknesses. Never use the word hope. That word hope has a hole in it. In that hole, there's doubt. And so that when we only hope for something, there's still that element of doubt. That's how that language can totally distort our mind. If we're going to speak English, try to choose the words that have medicine in them. Use the word trust. When we use the word trust, it creates a relationship of us, us and the Creator. And there is no doubt when we totally trust that something will happen.